Happy halfway through November. I can't believe Thanksgiving is next week, but it's exciting. Um, so obviously we have a guest speaker again tonight. Um, Nicole, we had Katie Hefner last week, so we are continuing the greatness. Um, so for those of you guys that don't know Nicole, I'm excited to hear a little bit more about her. Um, but Meredith Kelly, who spoke on our team call a couple of months ago, I think earlier in the fall, Nicole is her coach. And um, Elizabeth Hartke is Nicole's coach, I'm pretty sure, right? Yeah. So it's kind of our larger family tree, um, which is cool to kind of see, you know, she's, she's just a few years ahead of you guys, and she's just been hustling a little bit longer. Um, I wanted her to come on because I think our team is a lot like me, and the itch for traveling more and living a life of freedom is something that we all have on our big vision boards. And Nicole, if you check out her Facebook, is like the epitome of a wanderlust um, lover. She, she's, she'll probably tell you some more, but I've seen her this year like go travel the most incredible places. And it just reminds me that we have such a gift and an opportunity that we can't let the holidays or the excuses of hearing no hold us back from living the life we love. Um, all you need to find is a couple hustlers like yourself and you can live your life how you choose. So I'm going to be quiet and I'm sure Nicole can fill you in a little bit more on her journey and, and a little bit more about her story. And thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule. Of course. Thanks for having me guys. Um, so I was going to put together some slides and everything and give you tips, but then I was like, no, I just am going to kind of like speak from the heart from you guys. If you, I got a little bit of background from Danielle on the team and how you guys are all in corporate and you have that, that seemed like wanderlust. So I'll talk a little bit about kind of like my journey, but I do want to try to give you guys some actual things that you, I'm big on calls to action. Um, so I want to try to get to that as well, but I'm kind of just going to talk from the heart, the heart here. So feel free to interrupt me if you have questions. If you want me to elaborate on anything, I'm more than happy. I'm like a complete open book, and I love helping people kind of find their passion with this. So that's what I'm going to try to do is try to maybe help reignite or spark or bring your passion to like the next level. Um, so, yes. So Liz Harkey is my coach, and I actually um, – so I got started with Beachbody as a customer first. She and I worked together, and I used to work in um, the corporate America world. Uh, so I actually like, had a really tough childhood, and I started working when I was 16, and it's pretty much like all I've ever done. It's kind of how I've identified myself. It's just, you know, what I did with my free time. I worked three jobs through college, and then I went right into the corporate world. And for me, it was all about climbing, like, the corporate ladder. And that's what I thought life was about, was about, like, putting in your time there, proving yourself, and kind of going fast. Um, or as fast as you can within that world. So Liz worked with me and she actually, she hated it. And she left and she went off and did the speech body thing, which I thought was like absolutely crazy. I was like, who is this girl just going off and starting this business when I knew her and she was, at the time she was kind of, she wasn't quiet, but just being able to watch not only her step out of her comfort zone, but how much she changed and grew and evolved, it totally started to make me question everything. Um, so she literally tried to get me to coach for like three years. I was a discount coach for like three years. I would dabble every once in a while. Uh, cause I did, I love the programs. Like I've been drinking Shakeology every day for like five years. Like I have not missed a day and I am a wholehearted believer in the fitness programs. For me though, it started with like a personal, a personal journey of I've had melanoma a couple times. And so I have these scars that I'm really self-conscious about and I was feeling really bad about myself. And so like the fitness programs helped me kind of tap into how to feel good about myself again. And Liz was always trying to push me, but I couldn't see it. And the thing I want you guys to keep in mind with that is like, it took me like three years to kind of jump in and give it a go. And the one thing now that you guys are in it that I can recommend that you guys do for people is you have to be patient with the timing of people, but you have to have them experience a true transformation. So that's the first thing is like, I had to, become like fall in love with the program so you really like the biggest thing you can do to get started is like truly be a coach for someone like help guide them through the process and I know that sounds so basic but until someone has an in like a transformation whether it's internal with confidence from you know hitting a goal whether it's that external like that is huge for their belief and then the next thing is like you have to be very open and sharing 
kind of where you're headed. So even though you might not be where you want to be with this business yet, you have to share the vision for where you're going. So for me, like I never even considered this being anything realistic or possible for me because I always just thought that the corporate world was going to give me what I needed. Um, and I had a great job. Like I worked for Bacardi. Uh, Meredith actually worked with me as well. And I loved it for a while. It was a great salary package. I had great insurance. And it was really hard for me to see outside of that. But then I had Liz, you know, creating this dream life and um, traveling. And she was just growing so much as a person that I, it literally was like this internal, like, like shaking of my core. Like, wait a minute, this is wrong. Is this really happening? Like, how is this real? So that's when I started to give it a shot. impossible so it's teaching you to have like this whole new belief system and that's hard for people to do so as you're trying to build your team and you're trying to attract these people to you put yourself in their shoes remember your experience doesn't mean they yet understand that so you have to keep showing up and you have to keep reminding them so there's to get into it and then I finally jumped in um, so I've been a full-time coach now for a year and a half um, it was pretty ironic. I, my company restructured and I got laid off. Um, and I knew at that point that Liz was doing something really great. So I decided to kind of go all in. I will say there's nothing like having your back against the wall. I would never wish that on anyone. And that's now kind of like my own personal goal is to help people get to the point where they have that choice. You know, like Meredith is amazing and she has busted her ass and she is someone who like her work ethic is unlike anything I've ever seen but she was able to get to the point where she had the choice. And that's like pretty cool. How often do you have the choice to choose which path you're going to take in life? And so that's what this is all about. And so it might not be that everyone wants to, you know, leave their job, but you can introduce to something that gives them that choice. And it's also something to keep in mind that like life is so precious. Like why not take advantage of something that gives you the opportunity to truly make the most of it. Um, so since you guys love travel, um, yes, like I have been able to, the life I, you said you have to share it more because it's a gift and I am truthfully like I need to be better about sharing like my day in and day out because I have pinch me moments all the time where it's still so hard to believe that like three years ago I thought this was impossible but now I mean I've gone to Asia, um, I went to Bali, I've been to California for about a month, um, I was in Tennessee this summer, I was in Australia, I've literally like the places I've gone in the last year and a half are places like I literally used to, I remember saying probably like five years ago, you know, if you could do anything, you ask that question, if you could do anything, what would you do? And you, you kind of roll your eyes at it and you think, well, that's silly, but I guess if I could travel the world, like, and still provide for my family, that would be nice. And I remember saying like, that would be nice. And the fact that like, I'm now able to do that, it just seems so surreal. And it's kind of like, how the hell did I get here? But the thing to keep in mind is that it's a very simple system to follow and we can overcomplicate it over and over again but it's time like if you put in the time and you can stay consistent and you can believe and I'm going to give you some things that I think are really important and impactful but there's nothing separating you from anybody else if you decide what you want bad enough and you refuse to kind of um, get beat down by what life might throw at you and if you just continue to push forward like it's just time you will get there so the biggest thing you can do is like have that vision so I said you know it's so hard because we're teaching people to think about what's, what's impossible. So I want to start by saying like, regardless of where you're on the business, like I'm at a point now that I once didn't think I was going to get to. Um, and you're always going to have moments of self doubt. Like I still have moments of self doubt. Like it's inevitable, you know, where it's human nature. You're going to have moments where you kind of don't believe in yourself. You question the opportunity. You question like your sanity as to why like you're doing this. I'm not going to lie. It happens to everyone. You can even hear top coaches talk about it. I'll never forget. I think it was Megan Ewaldson said every September she considers quitting. Like what girl, you are at such a better place in your business than anybody else. That's just crazy talk. But I think it's the good thing to like, it's good for perspective to realize that it's, it has its highs and lows, but it's so important. Those times that you have those self doubt, that's when you really have to show up like these slow periods of time, like the holidays in our industry, it's hard. Like we're fitness, we're health, the holidays, no one wants to think about that, but that doesn't mean you can come off the brakes because this is the time that you need to consider it as, I don't know if any of you guys work in marketing or have experience with marketing, but this is the time when you're really planting the seeds. Like this is when you have to go like pedal to the metal and kind of give yourself that back against the wall feeling. You know, this is, people are watching and they might not be interacting with you right now, but as soon as they're ready, you want to be the person that's top of mind. So this is your chance to kind of, you know, get back to the basics. It's simple. I know we hear it 
all the time, but it's true. Like, are you committed a hundred percent to a program? Because that, that fire that comes with that. And if you, it gives you something to share every day, um, you know, your personal development. I ask myself during these times, all right, if I'm feeling like I'm in a rut and my business is struggling, like what can I learn today? That's a big question. I always think that you can challenge yourself to say like, what can I learn more about today? If you're in a rut and you know what, that also gives you some content to use for posts. Um, the other thing I like to say is like, who can I surprise today? Um, and this is a big one, especially in terms of like starting new conversations. I never go into conversations hoping to have a customer or a coach come out of it. Like I go into it with the con like the idea of making new friends um, because that's how you're going to connect the people with your niche. So a big niche for me is people that like to travel. So like I will talk to you about travel for like forever before we even get into anything about the products because something to keep in mind is that people are motivated by two things in life, by pain. People want to avoid pain and they want to seek out pleasure. And so the thing is that people want to avoid pain more. And what you can offer people as a coach is you can help them solve those pain points, but nobody really wants to talk about what those pain points are until you build that relationship with them. So like, who can you surprise today? Like, who can you just like brighten their day by sending them a message and like saying you like one of their posts or maybe it's someone that you have talked to before that you can send them a recommendation or a recipe or, you know, some travel tips, whatever is relevant to your niche. Um, but do that so that you can build the trust. So then when the time comes up that you, they present, you know, what they're struggling with or what their big goals are in life, like you can help them solve that problem. You can help them alleviate that pain and kind of be the hero in their own story. And I think that's a big thing to keep in mind. So like get back to just taking the time to invest in people when you're feeling, you know, these slow months, because it's all going to come back around. Um, I'm just look at my notes for a second. Um, all right. So in terms of, so your vision. I want you guys to think about, like, I told you this is kind of gives you the opportunity to, um, you have to really think about something that, that brings up this, like, fire inside of you. Because it's not always going to be easy, but you need something that even on the, those hard days you can think about, you can visualize yourself, you know, on a beach in Bali or whatever it might be. And that's going to make you kind of, like, keep doing, like, one more hour of work or just to get there. But the thing I want you to keep in mind is, is that you guys are all on here because you're at a point where you're building teams. The magic in this business is when you're able to help your teams to do the same. So I want you to remember that you are virtually working with volunteers. Like nobody has to be here. And the really cool thing about this business is that any other job that you're in, I mean, I know for me, I never felt as appreciated in that any other job as I do in this this business. So like for your teams, make them feel appreciated because if they don't feel appreciated and they don't feel valued, they're not going to want to show up. And the biggest thing you can do for them right now is to kind of be there to help them feel appreciated. Um, hold on one second. Let me just pull up something real quick. So a couple of things to keep in mind is like you have to develop your own vision and that vision really has to like that fire inside of you, but you also have to help other people do that. Um, success comes in like teaching people how to visualize their beliefs. You want to ask them the deep questions, help them like know and believe that you have the solution for them. Um, you know, everyone has a story and you need to know what their story is. You need to learn about why they're here, but also the bigger story in their life. Um, and you have to remember that like people are choosing this and it's, it's kind of your job as a coach to figure out why they're choosing this or to introduce them to why they should choose this and figure out where they're headed and meet them where they are. So to do that, you have to learn their story. And as a coach, you have to help them individually, like figure out what their strengths are. You have to help them feel valued. Um, you, if you don't make them feel valued, they're gonna initially go away. Cause initially like everything we do in this is about the community and it's about that self love and helping them have that transformation. So you have to tap into that. That's so important. And unless you teach people to kind of like rediscover or reveal their own values and what's important to them, it's going to be hard to connect this opportunity to anything that's really lasting or meaningful for them. Um, it's not anchored until you help them like have that epiphany moment. So I want to ask, have you guys had your epiphany moments yet where it like clicks and you realize, Oh my goodness, like this, this is for me. This is where I'm going. I don't care how long it takes me. I'm committed to this. Have you guys had that yet? Yeah. A couple of you. Okay, cool. So that's something like, oh, somebody's chiming in, sorry. No? Okay. Um, I always say, think about when you're a brand new coach and how scared you are. But you want to like, you have to be, do like one-on-one -on -one calls with your coaches. They should become your friends. You should know like everything about them and make them feel valued because if money was not, like, even though like I now love this opportunity and everything it's done for my life, if the money was gone, I would still show up. 
And so that's what you have to kind of create. And so also during these times where it's kind of a little bit slower, like have fun with it. Like think about that. Like what can you do to make people feel really connected again, like to make them feel empowered and love this community. Um, you know, we've started doing, I do like these women crush Wednesdays with my team where it's just highlighting someone each week and helping them see themselves through our eyes. And we just kind of shower them and let them know what their strengths are, what we admire about them. And then we give them a week to go live on our team page and share their story. And this has been a really great call to action for them to practice and see like their own true value and what they have to offer other people. Um, so take that time to really invest in your coaches. I also like, I worked with my entire downline my first year is like really jump into the coach like full time because I realized like my coaches, like they don't know how to start this off right away. So like my one-on-one -on -one calls, I would also do them for my coaches, coaches. And I would treat, like I would do success club prizes, you know, for my entire downline. And I understand financially where you're at. It doesn't have to be prizes. It can just be like little challenges that you like rally everyone together. But I do encourage you to kind of like work with your downline as well. Um, you know, I go usually like two to three levels deep, but that's helped me to build like really great volume for my for team cycle bonuses. So kind of step into realizing that you have to help your coaches win. You have to help them have success. And that starts by you like putting your vision out there, even if you haven't gotten there yet asking the hard questions for them to figure out what theirs are and then like doing that with their coaches as well. So really build that depth because that's how it's going to be long-term and that's how you start to truly change everyone's lives. Um, keep showing up. One-on-one -on -one calls. Um, I'm starting to ramble a little bit, but I think the biggest thing like I can say to you guys is yes, I am like able to travel now and bring my work with me and it's amazing. And it's a dream come true, but what this opportunity can do for you if you if you can stick it out and stay strong and have the belief is what it's going to do for you personally in your life. Um, I have had like countless struggle after struggle and like I even um, I like was going to do like this whole thing just on Wanderlust, but I think this is even more impactful. Is like I recently found out that I um, have I have thyroid cancer, which like totally sucks. It's a good form of cancer, if that's possible. But I've had like all these tests in life, and they keep trying to knock me down, and I've realized like what this opportunity has done for me, it's taught me to be strong and it's taught me to fight through and it's taught me like how important life is. Um, there's something that, you know, mortality motivation. And that's when you have like this, uh, this realization that life is so precious and you will do anything to live it on your own terms. And that's an amazing, powerful force to have, but you don't have to wait for that. Like motivation is something that you generate for yourself based on where you want to get to. And so like you are the only person that can do it for you. And there's always going to be tests that try to pull you down. And like this time of year, I'm not going to lie. It's a test. It's hard for everyone, but this is your chance to kind of really fight through and keep showing up and realize that this can get you to where you want to be if you're consistent and what it does for you in terms of, you know, today I wanted nothing more than to just like curl up in a ball and cry all day, which was like so terrible, but I could do that and like not feel guilty about it because like I, I have my own schedule now and I've been able to like build this environment for myself where I can take care of me and I can teach other people to do that as well. So that freedom, there's truly nothing to nothing like it. And it doesn't matter how long it takes you to get there. It's so worth it. And there's nothing like being able to share that with other people. And that's what it's all about. It's teaching other people how to tap into this because it's, I mean, it truly gives you the ability to kind of like seize life and make the most of it. And it takes work and it won't be easy. But the person that you grow into along the way, if you can each time you face these challenges, just ask yourself, okay, what can I learn today? Okay, who can I surprise today? Like, what can I do to give value today? And just keep focusing on that and how, and then like teach your coaches to do the same, like put other people first. That's where it all comes into, you know, it comes full circle. Um, so I'm totally rambling. Do you, <laughs> does anyone have any questions? Does anyone want me to like elaborate on anything specifically or Danielle, do you want to chime in on anything? Let's see if I, my notes here. Shannon, you got something? I can see she's thinking. I was, I was wondering if I type because I don't want to. mute that. They're in the same, the same place, yeah. Nicole, York, and Shannon. <laughs> oh, nice. I was thinking maybe I should type, but I'm just going to go for it. Um, I have two questions. One is, do you, this is a little random, but do you post in like a certain time zone when you're always traveling in terms of how you plan your social media? And what is your, you're talking about kind of like your coach onboarding process being for your whole downline. Do you schedule those at the same time or everyone just is kind of 
like all new coaches are doing it at the same time, maybe at the same week, or it's just they're all going through the same program. Mm -hmm. So, so, um, so posting, yes, like wherever I am traveling, I usually keep it kind of customized to my time zone. Um, but I've also done some experiments and to figure out what works best for me in terms of traction with like, you know, who I'm attracting. So that takes experimenting. Um, like for me, I've come to realize that like literally different days of the week, I have different times. Um, but you know, like Monday mornings seem to do really well. Tuesday afternoons, um, Wednesdays are like my peak always. So I always try to get like three solid posts in on Wednesday. So there's no cookie cutter mold for that. It really comes down to you just tracking your own business and experimenting with different things. Um, keep in mind that you know, on a Saturday, like, yes, it's good to show that we're showing up and we're still living a healthy lifestyle, but Saturdays, people want to see more like you, your life. So you want to like, let yourself come across. Um, I kind of like to follow the 80, 20 rule there where, you know, I like it to be 80% like me sharing my life, just sharing me, like the lifestyle that I'm reaching for or that I'm living. And then 20% is like really that added value, like right hook type of business stuff with like calls to action. Um, so that's kind of what I do. But Anything I post, the first question I ask myself is like, would I say this to my best friend? Um, just to see if it's in like my own language. That took a learning curve. If I go back to posts when I first started, I cringe. Um, and they were like crickets. So like you have to be like, that's another thing I want to say is be patient with yourself, guys. Like you're going to do so much trial and error. And it's just, it's part of, it's part of the, the journey. Um, I went to Brendan Burchard's High Performance Academy a couple months ago. And he said something really great. He's like, we get so focused on like the destination, right? You go through all of this because you have this end in mind where you want to get to, but then you get there and it's like, well, sh well shit, now what? Sorry if you guys don't swear. Um, because if it's, we all believe it's about the journey, right? So if it's about the journey, why not have fun with the journey now? Like appreciate where you are now. Um, you know, learn from it, learn from those challenges, like experiment, have fun with it, like make it fun however you can. So for me, I keep it to my time zone or at least within like the, the U.S. obviously. Um, but just I would experiment a little bit and see when you get the most traction and that can take a little bit of time. Um, if you're on Instagram, Iconosquare is a really great app that lets you actually track kind of how your, your posts are performing. So it'll tell you, um, you know, when you get the most traction. Um, so that's a really great way if you want to like take it to that level in your business. But I don't think that's necessary, you know, anytime. Like keep it simple and just pay attention to it. Um, my new coaches. So I am really big on one-on-one. -on -one. I like to give my coaches like personal attention. So this is my own style of business. Like it depends, you know, some people do large scope. I just, I love the coaching side of it. Like I truly do. Um, so for me, I always do a one-on-one -on -one get and start a right call. I always like to get people on the phone before I even sign them up as well, just because I think you can get so much of you across. Um, and I encourage like my coaches, if they're not comfortable talking to people yet, like I do want three way calls with any of their new prospects. So, um, I know, I don't know if Danielle, sorry, not to throw you under the bus, Danielle, but I don't know if you do this or not, but it does really help people learn how to talk confidently about the business. Um, so I do one-on-one -on -one calls to get them started. Right. And something I've just started doing recently is I give people the choice. So I used to just throw them into a training group and expect them to like take off running. I now kind of ask them what they think they can do, what they can handle. Cause I want to be better about being clear with like their real, like their expectations. So I have a questionnaire that goes out to them that says, you know, what are your goals? How much time can you invest? Um, which I'm happy to share with you guys if you want to see it. And then I give them the choice. I have a, a quick start training group that's just one week that's basically like how to get your Shakeology covered so it's for discount coaches that want to you know earn back their investment it also shows them like how simple coaching can be and then I have a um a business starter group and this is kind of like a 30-day just teaching them everything you need to know if you want to build this as a part-time or full-time business so I explain both of them and I give them the choice um and the reason I do that is because it lets them like figure out how much they really want of this and it exposes them to it regardless. And then I do weekly calls with them. Um, but I always give them calls to action before those weekly calls so that we have something to kind of touch base on. Um, <clears throat> but I will tell you like my coaches are like my best friends now. Um, I talk to them like all the time. And the really cool thing about it is like, I know my team culture, if, if the business opportunity were to go away, like, we probably like set our own beach body community <laughs> like of something, you know? So like take that time to become invested in them because they, I know now when they're having those, like those rough times or like if it's a low income week and I can get ahead of it and I can like 
I can be there to help believe in them when they're having those moments of self-doubt. So like you have to be kind of connected to your coaches and help them figure out their strengths and help them stay motivated. Um, like be a coach, you know, and that's the one thing I say to like them a lot when they're feeling discouraged. I'm like, all right, well, what have you done for your team this week? You know, like put it back on them because if, if they're not doing anything or if it's a new coach, be like, all right, well, have you shared your journey at all this week? You know, have, have you talked to anyone about your workouts? Have you, have you made any new friends? Like ask them questions that like are, you know, are necessary to move the business forward and let them come up with the answer. I think a lot of times we want to give people the answer, but there's something so impactful about giving people the chance to figure out the answer on their own because then they have that self-awareness and they know what they need to do to get it done. And then it's like that system of accountability is there a little bit more for them. Did I answer your question? I know I ramble a lot. Sorry. <laughs> I can go on tangents for days. <laughs> no, I love this. I think it's perfect. Um, I have a question. So all, all of these coaches on here are at the point in their business where they are looking for other people to join their team. They mm -hmm are invested, they love the workout programs, they see the vision. What was kind of the catalyst for you to start growing your team? And maybe you can speak to like some struggles through that um, because they know I share it all the time of, you know, coaches who quit and things like that. But if you could kind of speak to that, I think that'd be really great. Yeah. Um, so I think the first thing you have to realize is like coaching is not going to be for anyone. So you can't, I've, I've had people that I've been like, oh my goodness, this person's going to be a rock star and get so excited. But that you can't put that expectation on people. It's not fair to them. And it's also kind of like setting yourself up for failure. So I think that's the first thing is you have to realize, like take the discouragement away from it and know that like, it's just not going to be for everyone. But then also like truly believe, like think about what it's done for you so far in your life. You know, how I guarantee you, you're, you're here because it's done something really amazing for you. Like that's, that's what you really want to like be able to introduce to people. So I like, I always say like you have to be patient when you come into new coaches because you really want to, I like personally, I like to offer to people when I know that they cannot say no. <laughs> um, so I talk to a lot of people and I obviously lead with the fitness, you know, the challenge groups because I want people to have a transformation. But like I talk to people to the point like where I know them so well that I can literally say, listen, and I've never meet, met these people, you know, this is like on Instagram conversations, but I can say to them, you just can't say no. Like, I'm so confident. I tell them like, you have to do this. You have to give me a chance. Give me 30 days. You can get your money back. Like the confidence you go into it is going to be huge. Um, and then it's kind of given them that support. Uh, the struggles, like people are going to say no. And it, it can hurt because you know that you can give them everything, like this amazing opportunity and you know how much you can help them and you see the potential in and it sucks. And it's, um, because this goes back to belief where they don't, they don't see what's possible yet. And I think well, seven, seven times, seven interactions before they finally like decide. Invited people like seven times in place, not outright said, you know, like, Hey, join my challenge. Or, like, have you ever considered, or would you be open to learning like, a way to give them a little bit more? This is all about. Um, but you have to, you have, and you have to know what for them. And I think that was the biggest shift for me is when I first started. To click a little bit more and they, their people are ready to kind of kind of explore it and give it a chance. So um, I'll send you guys like this, this really great podcast on um, on telling your story where you make the person the hero in their in your story. So you want to frame up your messages in a way that like you're telling them specifically what it's going to do for them. And sometimes it can be as simple as like if you've been, you know, forming with someone for a little while and you want them to be a coach in your team, like take a minute to write it down, like write down why what coaching would do for them specifically? What, what problems will you solve for them? Why do you think they would be a good coach? What potential do they have? Where do you see this like in their vision of their life? And then like tell them that. And I think when you go to them and can say like, this is what I'm trying to help you get to, you're helping them see that like you're giving them something that will let them be the hero in their own story to have like their own wins. That's really, really powerful. And that was a big shift in my own business from where it was like all my posts were, I don't want to say like, 
all about me, but like they kind of are because we're sharing our journey, you know, but as soon as you can like shift it a little bit to make people realize that you have something to offer that's going to help them get to the goal they want to get to and you'll be the coach that will guide them there that helps them read it in a different light. So that was really big. Um, other struggles. The hardest struggle is when like you, you want it so badly for someone and you know, they have so much potential. Um, and I am like the prime example of this. Like you can't want it for people. Like it took me a while <laughs> to come around and like Liz hated me for like three years. Um, but you have to kind of like, be a little bit patient with people. And I think when like, you know, someone has that much potential and maybe they're not running with the business yet, go back to the other stuff that we do for people. Like go back to that transformation, like go back to helping them have that confidence, helping them, you know, hit a goal, like just a goal of finishing a program is huge. Or maybe it's, you know, one of our re like the reset or something, help them win in terms of like their own life again. And that's where that like fire starts to build that momentum and that energy where like they can't help but talk about it and people are attracted to them. But sometimes you have to like take that step back and just go back to the basics of like it has to start with a full transformation of some sort. Um, but don't, you know, that's the biggest thing is like is you can't want it for someone, but you can keep showing up for them. Um, you know, like keep having those one-on-one -on -one calls, like keep asking, like, what can I do to help you get to the next level? Like be a coach, like be invested in them and, and keep reminding them of like, so once you have a coach, you should know what their pain points are and you should know what their story is. So when you feel them slacking a little bit and you know that they want this, like kind of like call them out a little bit on it, like a little bit of that tough love and be like, you told me like you wanted this because you are, you don't want to have to like put your child in daycare, you know, in a year, like whatever that pain point is, like remind them of their why, because that's, what's going to fuel them forward. Is that good? Um, other yes. struggles. I love this. Okay, good. And the only other struggle I would say, like, this is a big one is like self is like the self doubt and the self belief. And like, honestly, no matter where you get in your business, it's your business um, and it's hard not to take it personally, but you just have to like make that mindset shift mindset shift and realize like it's a business. So it's an organization, treat it like an organization. Like that's what it is. Like this is going to change your life. If you guys are all in corporate, like treat it the same way, you know, show up how you would give it your best and realize that like, obviously we're going to have moments of self doubt. That's human nature. But that's when you like take that step back and be like, why am I doing this? Where am I going? And what can I learn today to get through this moment? And that's like really huge because it gives you like an immediate call to action. I think that's a, an important point that we don't talk about often enough. Like doubt is part of just life in general, but like Beachbody gives you the personal development solution. You just have to put in the time to do it and recognize like, hey, this isn't working for me right now. I need to start on myself and fill my cup first uh -huh. before I can help others. Yeah. So thank you for sharing that because it's something that you guys, I think you, you see like these beautiful painted pictures of like, well, they just have it all going on. And it's like, I struggle with it on a weekly basis. Like you can ask Noel, that's what success partners are for because you need that support system to kind of lift you up and, and push you through it. What are the questions you guys have? Don't be bashful. Jackie, you got something? No pressure at all. I'm always available too if you guys have questions. <laughs> um, but yeah, so like you're not in, like that's like you're not in it alone in terms of like those hard times. Like you never think you are, but I will tell you, like it's so worth it. Like so so worth it. You literally, I couldn't imagine going back to where I was before. And like, it's, it, it's kind of like when you get to the point that like, yes, it takes a lot of work and a lot of like, um, that doubt and a lot of people thinking you're like slightly crazy. My family thought I lost my mind. Like I lost my job and I was making, I think like 200 bucks a month with Beachbody at the time. And I was like, hell, I'm going all in, I'm doing it. Um, and that is something I will say, there's nothing like that back against the wall feeling. So like, if you have to like somehow like if you want that fire like to like go full forward right now like sometimes like try to give yourself that back against the wall mentality because it's really amazing what you can do when you put that pressure on yourself and I never want to put that pressure on people but like if you want it bad enough and you put it on yourself like that helps you get through some of those really tough times for sure <clears throat> 
Yeah, I do. That's something that I think is really huge. Um, it's taking the time to like become invested in people before because not only for me, I know when they, like when they join my team or when like they get started with the program, I feel like better about myself, if you will, because I know that it's right for them. Um, and I know that they're going to benefit from it and that they're going to have amazing results. So, um, yeah. And also like if you throw it out there, like if you offer someone, have you ever considered and they say no, don't go away. Like never go away. Like just change the conversation. Like keep talking to them because a lot of the people that tell you, like I always say, don't think of it as no, think of not right now. Um, so like keep, keep the conversation going. Cause if you just go away after they say no, it's kind of like, well, she didn't really care to take the time to get to know me. So that's where you have to like remind yourself to keep showing up. I think that's such great points. And it's, I was guilty of it when I first started. I was like, okay, no, on to the next one. And it's like, some of the best coaches on our team, I always tell them, like, think about how long it took you to get started. It was most of them at least a month or more, some a year. So you have to think about how long it took you and that's who you're going to attract. Uh-huh. What else you guys got? Shannon, you're thinking something, I can tell. Do you mind to share a little bit about your challenge groups and kind of how you keep and maybe that like transition process or conversation like a little bit. Sorry, I lost you a little bit. Share more about challenge groups. Yeah, and just kind of what you do. Do you do anything to keep people engaged or similar to like your coach process? You know, how do you work with your challengers? Yeah. So, um, honestly, I can't say that every – my challenge groups are kind of like all different, I'll be honest. Um. The big thing I do like to do, though, is that I have my new coaches help me run challenge groups. And the reason I do this is because, like, it takes the pressure off of them. It helps them step up in terms of, like, their own accountability for their workouts. It gives them that fulfillment of helping people, and it teaches them, like, you know, challenge groups are so fun when you're just getting started. So, like, um, I always do it, like, with another coach and then usually, like, one or two of my new coaches. And I kind of let them be involved in like the creative process. Like I asked them, so, you know, we're going into the holidays, like what would be a fun like theme right now? And it could be something as simple as having them help me come up with a name, but like those little things to give them those, like that sense of ownership and those wins. Um, and then we kind of just put together like a list of like, you know, posts, like I do those all in advance. So like we have a motivational quote each day, but then we ourselves treat them as challenge groups. Like we're involved in them and like we pretend we're challengers. And I think that really helps keep the energy up. Um, yes, we'll do like little challenges every once in a while where one that was actually really successful that I loved that I kind of want to do more of is during the Olympics, we kind of had like teams. Um, so we would pair up challengers together. And so what was really cool is from an accountability standpoint, not only do they have us coaches, but like they had their teammate. So we would like do little challenges where it was like, call out your teammate. Like, all right, we want to do like a plank challenge, like call out your teammate, like, We'll do, like, Wine Wednesdays. Yes, we sacrifice our fellows for wine. Um, <laughs> but, like, little things like that. So that was really huge for everyone's, like, energy, accountability, like, motivation was when we did, like, that partnership. And it was cool because, like, you saw our challengers start to, like, make friends with people they didn't know. And that kind of introduced them to, like, what the coaching opportunity is about from the community aspect, you know. So that was really cool. Um, but I mean, I do a challenge group every month. I never keep them like exactly the same. They're always a little bit different. But the one thing I do is I always incorporate like my new coaches into the plan and process. And that helps with like showing them it can be easy, helping them have like those little wins and take that like that ownership right away. Because when people have that ownership of it, they feel more confident inviting people to it, you know, as opposed to if like they're just in there experiencing it for the first time, like they're like, oh, like I'll just check it out. But if they're helping you plan it, then they actually feel like they can invite people because it's it's theirs, you know. So that helps from the confidence perspective. I think that's great tips, and we're gonna have to do those little teammate challenges for the health bet because I think you guys have all you guys were all on the health bet, and you know the energy that that brought. Like, who's to say you can't do that every single month? You can put a twenty dollar gift card up, and you know, say mm -hmm. whoever checks in every single day gets put in the pot at the end. Um, so it's the little things that get people. I'm like, guys, it was $15 check at the end of the health bet. It wasn't like anything crazy. Um, but I, I love that teammate idea. I think that that's... Yeah. And those little prizes they do, like I've done... Um, what are some of the prizes we've done? We've done like every time you post um, a new recipe, like I would do raffles each week. 
you post a new recipe, you get one raffle ticket. If you post a sweaty selfie, you get like two raffle tickets. Um, and we would do like little prizes each week. And they were like really little, like it would be like, you know, cute little headbands or stuff like that that you can get at Target or TJ Maxx for like five bucks. So it's nothing big, but it does do a lot in terms of like their motivation. Um, but that would be like these times of year, like I would say like, you know, really amp up and get creative and try to have fun with those ideas in terms of, and if like you're asking these questions, like maybe one of the things you can learn right now is how to motivate people. Like that's a really big thing to learn, you know, because like, we have to motivate people as challengers and as coaches. Um, so even like going into the holidays, like how can you keep your teams motivated right now? You know, like it's a busy time of year for people. So how are you going to make it fun for them and stay top of mind? And that's something to always like, I literally every Monday in my planner, I write down, um, what, what did I do? What am I doing for my team this week? Who, who can I surprise? And like, how can I be of value? And those are like my three checks that I just, I always check in with every week to keep me kind of like grounded and remind where that like, yes, this is about me, but this is about like first and foremost, like other people. And that like really helps. But have fun with it. Like this is the time to just like have fun, get creative. Like consider this as like your marketing time going into the new year. Like you commit to a journey, like focus on yourself during these slow times. It's so important to focus on yourself and focus on how like you're staying committed and how, where you're reaching. Like, why are you a coach? Like do people know why you're a coach. Like put that out there so that people can see it and like keep planting those seeds and start those like make new friends now. So that way when people are ready to like think about health and nutrition and like new changes and new goals in life, you are top of mind and you can go to them and be like, you will have talked to them for like a month. So you know everything about them. You know what they did for the holidays. Like you know how much weight they gained because of the holidays. You know, you're that connected to like conversations that like come the new year. You're like, girl, let me help you. <laughs> Um, so that's just, you just want to get to that point where you have that confidence and it takes a little bit of time on the back work, but it's so much more worth it because you already have that, that belief built up. But also remember, like you have to keep believing in people and keep showing up. So. Awesome. I love all that. I was, I just launched a new getting started right for challengers, um, to our team this week. And the first thing on there is to have my challengers do a contract like we did for quarter force test group. Mm -hmm. And it has rocked. Like if you guys haven't sent that to your challengers for this month yet, send it to them because it's done wonders for them. Just like checking in every day. And I know exactly where they're starting and can call them out just like I do you guys. <laughs> Well, this was awesome, Nicole. I don't know about you guys, but I, I wanted to have somebody different on because I didn't know much about Nicole, but also I just felt like it was the perfect time to bring in some new spirit and give you guys, you know, to show you she's just a normal girl, guys. She's just been doing a little bit longer and a little bit harder, and you don't have to quit your job, but this is the time of year that – you plant your seed for the farm coming in January and everything you do now determines how many people you help then. So you got to just push through and know that all those no's are just seeds. Uh -huh. Any closing thoughts, Nicole? This was awesome. No, yeah. I mean, uh, like it's, I, I'm definitely more than normal. I struggle. I still like struggle with social media sometimes. Like I, I struggle with the self doubt and like the self, belief part of it like that I'm not going to tell you that goes away but you get so much better <laughs> like you get stronger like it makes you you there is no other industry you're going to be in that like constantly helps you focus on growing and moving forward and like becoming more resource more resourceful like that's the biggest gift this does for you is it teaches you how to like truly like be a badass in life which is pretty cool um so like just keep showing up because it's so worth it. And even on those days that you don't want to, those are the days you really, really have to because what that will do for your energy the next day when you like are fired up or like you just have that sense of accomplishment and you never know how close you are. Like you could like literally feel as though like I'm at my wits end and like your dream coach, like your dream business partner is like one, one conversation away, you know, you never know. So, um, don't be afraid to start conversations. Like I know that's really intimidating for people. Like when you don't know them, don't think of it as like going in for a sale. Think of it as like making a new friends, like creep on their posts for like on their profile for a little while, like connect to them for like a real reason. You know, um, I always say like the, the format is like, um, what is it? It's like comment, compliment, 
uh, question. So if you're starting a conversation and you don't know how to start a conversation, like make a comment about one of their pictures, um, compliment them on something that you noticed and ask them a question. Like always end with a question because that'll keep it going. And now is the time to like really just don't slow down. <laughs> don't do it. Like this is the time to like go strong because it will make your next year like everything changes if you can go strong and like give yourself a solid like 30 days like no nonsense like show up every day for 30 days and I guarantee you like you'll have some serious momentum going and it's pretty awesome so. awesome. well thank you Nicole um it was nice to hear from you I know they appreciate it and hope you have a great Thanksgiving thanks guys it was so nice to to virtually meet you all <laughs> yes and hopefully I'll be seeing you in Punta Cana yes well you guys gotta get on the list for next year just saying all right, guys. Have a good week. All right. Bye, guys. Have a good night.